Good evening. Welcome to Chicago First, our monthly program by Maryville Academy telling you about programs for children and their families. This evening, we're going to tell you about a very exciting program, Casa Salama, a program that Maryville Academy offers for some very precious children. We have two guests tonight, Dr. Rocco Simarusti, who's here with me now, and later in the program, Miss Elizabeth Pitts. So first, let's start with Dr. Rocco Simarusti. And Rocco, would you tell us, why are you a doctor? What, can, what uh, kind of credentials are we talking about? Uh, sister, I have a doctorate in social work. Uh, I've been in this field of social work for 31 years. Mm, more than that, actually. 32. And uh, since the se late 70s on, and uh, went and took my doctorate. I taught for a while and uh, have worked with teenagers and families for many years. And how long have you been at Maryville Academy? Oh, going on... Um, since 2003, sister, I believe that would be seven years on August 1st. And Rocco, let me just ask you, how about life experience? Are you yourself a father? I have three wonderful kids. And they're grown? They're adults, absolutely. All right. so and three grandchildren, sister. We already have our outcomes from Rocco's uh, experience. And now, Rocco, you are the program director for our Casa Salama program. Yes, sister. And first of all, perhaps you could tell our viewers, what does that name mean? Casa Salama is... Uh, a combination of two two languages. Casa is Spanish for house, and Salama is Swahili for safety. And as we talk a little bit about the program, people will see how important it is to, that it be named the House of Safety. Well, let's talk about the children who are coming to the program. This is a program for girls, adolescent yes. girls. Yes. And tell us about some of their special needs, Rocco. This isn't for just any adolescent girl. The girls who make up our population, and, and we can house up to 30, uh, include uh, children, young ladies between the ages of 12 and 20 who have uh, some diagnosed mental illness, um, a uh, uh, diagnosed intellectual disability. Uh, the public may know about, may th regard that like mental retardation. It means they have IQs 70 or below. And all of them have had some sort of trauma history in their background. And trauma meaning? <clears throat> They've either witnessed violence or they have been subject to violence. They may have been abused physically, otherwise, or neglected. So these young ladies are experiencing three challenges, uh, any one of which is, uh, is major. The, the intellectual disability, the mental illness, and the experience of trauma in the child's own life. Is that right? Absolutely, sister. They're very, very ch they've had very tough lives, very tough lives. And uh, Rocco, <coughs> do we also have a program for boys, of course. We're not going to talk about that program tonight, but let's at least tell our viewers uh, that we have such a program, Rocco. That's the St. George program. It's uh, housed in uh, Des Plaines and also can hold about 30 boys uh, between the ages of 12 and 20. Okay, thank you. Uh, the reason we have the two different uh, programs uh, at different sites is that we have only girls, it's our Eisenberg campus in Bartlett is dedicated to girls. Our Des Plaines campus is dedicated to boys. So we're going back now to Bartlett, to our Casa Salama program. And Rocco, what is the nature of the treatment intervention that uh, we can offer for our, our children? 20, 30 years ago, the children would have been institutionalized, wouldn't they? Absolutely, or worse. Um, because we use a, a trauma theory as a real basis, uh, the importance of relationship uh, is paramount, and, and as Ms. Pitts talks about even the program, you'll see how the relationship between youth care staff and kids is important. Uh, we have three homes that can hold ten girls each. Uh, each girl has their own bedroom, and each home has a therapist. Um, a psychiatrist, child psychiatrist comes out uh, once a month to see the kid, but she's out there every week but she's seeing different kids and and those children who need medication uh, she manages that prescribes that kids administer that to themselves or the nurses administer it to them and um, they participate in groups individual therapy um, in many instances family therapy or therapy with a sibling or some significant other because we want them to you know, be prepared and be connected to their own uh, communities. And what are the goals for our girls in the program? Uh, we have three at Salama. Uh, the first one is for them to learn to live harmoniously or in peace with other people because they've seen so much violence 
uh, or experienced it, they, they may never have had much time to be at peace with anyone in, in their residence. So our first goal is for them to, 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 to experience that. Second goal is for them to heal as best as they can. And trauma theory tells us the treatment is for them to learn to regulate their own emotions so that their emotions don't get the best of them and for them to learn how to be in a good relationship and, and stay in one. And then lastly, we want to prepare our girls for life after Maryville where they return to their community, a community, and uh, survive independently or as independently as they can. Now, Rocco, I want to ask you another question about the trauma-informed care that you're talking about. This comes out of our learnings about post-traumatic stress, doesn't it? Yes, sister. And so as I understand it, some <coughs> of this knowledge has come to us uh, way too tragically by learning what our uh, military have suffered when they've been in the wars. Yes, sister. It's and that, historics, yes. Okay. And that knowledge now you're using also for our children who have it suffered from the traumas of violence. Absolutely. Can, can you say a little more about that? Well, one of the advances beyond uh, the episode of MASH where you see the, the psychiatrist is going to make sure that the soldier goes right back into combat, since then, we've, uh, through uh, neuroimaging and other, other ways, we, uh, neuroscientists have seen much more how the brain functions and how the brain is actually changed by early trauma and rep repeated trauma. So uh, that has informed how, how to interact with these folks so that you don't spend a lot of time uh, doing something that's either useless or harmful. And the other piece is because our girls all have intellectual disabilities, um, there is the factor of how you might get language, uh, how you might use intervention in ways that are other than language because they may not have very good language. With a 40 IQ, you might need to do art therapy or movement therapy um, and again, these, these uh, newer ways, what people used to call adjunct, they're, they're much more acceptable in, in the trauma treatment because uh, the trauma stays in the body. And so, Rocco, can you tie that to why we made the decision to have the Casa Salama program on a campus in a sort of a pastoral setting in Bartlett? Well, um, the, the first and foremost would go right back to the, the Casa Salama name. It's a house of safety. Our environment needs to be safe. Uh, the, the trauma theorists all agree that there's really not a thing that can be done um, if, if we can't uh, uh, have the kids feel safe. They have to have a safe environment. Uh, we have 56 acre campus, uh, deer on my campus, ducks on my campus, um, a little lake. Uh, it's, a, it's a very calm and nice setting and uh, that just gives the first step of, of the safety that the kids need to feel. And now I want you to tell a completely different story Rocco. <coughs> I want our viewers to know as we've been talking about some of what's in our heads. We know uh, a lot about the diagnoses that are of what's happened to our children and some things about what the treatment should be uh, but some of that's in our heads. Uh, we are dealing with children and so what we know is that while we deal with those issues we also have to touch their hearts. And you, Rocco, and your staff had a dream that our children would have a once-in-a-lifetime trip. I would like you to tell our viewers about that. Uh, I'm very fortunate. Uh, I'm probably the only social worker in America who can say that in his career he sent uh, 14 girls and their staff to Disney World. Um, Someone, you're exactly right, sister, one of the staff said that they would love to have the girls have that experience. And it struck me immediately that this was going to be a once in a lifetime, as you said. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed to know some folks who had the, the financial means and we approached them and they were uh, uh, eager. Uh, I never saw such a, a, a fast response. Eager to, to assist that, eager to help make that happen. And... Uh, my programs uh, struggled for three months to, to figure out who got to go, who could handle it. These are children who are going to be in an environment where thousands of people are, in the heat, uh, having traveled by airplane. Some of them never even seen an airplane except on TV, uh, let alone be in one. Uh, these are kids who are easily frightened, uh, and we were really going to move them very far. So a lot of planning 
had to had to happen and and uh, as I said they chose 14 of the 30 girls uh, and staff went too and they had a magnificent time and I just want to be clear for our viewers Rocco the girls who didn't go didn't go because of clinical reasons absolutely this donor and was willing to send all 30 of the girls absolutely. if they wanted if they were able to go right absolutely and it's not like they sat home out of luck that they didn't get to go uh, that group the group that stayed home I stayed with them uh, we went to Great America they uh, had any of a number of barbecues they had spa night uh, where they went and had their nails done uh, they had a week of activities and joy uh, similar to the girls that got a chance to go to Disney World and Rocco <coughs> I could see some people saying that's a wonderful trip it's a nice vacation uh, uh, but what really why is that important for our young ladies would you talk about the particular significance of our girls from Casa Salama having this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? You know, Sister, uh, people, probably as we talk, people who have been to Disney World are remembering having been to Disney World. Every child should have that op option, should be able to access that kind of memory. We, we provided that. These girls uh, had a moment of being just children not being traumatized children, not being uh, intellectually disabled or, or uh, uh, um, mentally retarded children, not being mentally ill children. They just got to be children. And uh, you said it very well, sister. Uh, there's not any way to fix them if uh, they're not able to just be children. Thank you, Rocco. And I see we have a caller, so perhaps we can hear the caller's question. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say this. I've been knowing about Maryville Academy for a number of years. I also was awarded to state. I just want to say what a wonderful job you do as a staff, helping children be children and regaining their lives, teaching them what's age appropriate, what's not age appropriate. And I don't think your staff get it enough. And I just wanted to take a time out and just say thank you continue to do what you do and I pray there'll come a time in our lifetime that your services will no longer be needed. Well we will join you in that prayer Amen. and I'm also going to let all of our staff know tomorrow of your kind words. Thank you very much. Thank you. They are wonderful staff. Now uh, Rocco I think that you were present when we had the uh, visit from a reporter from the Daily Herald. Yes sister. Bert Constable. Yes sister. And uh, Bert came out uh, to to visit Casa Salama to learn about the program and he wrote an article uh, for March the 18th uh, this year for the Daily Herald. So I'm going to show our viewers that article. And uh, the, the, the article says this is a place for children uh, who can turn a placement into a real home. And that's what we want for the children. We never replace their parents. But while they're with us, we want this to be their home. And now Rocco has uh, stepped aside and has invited in uh, Elizabeth Pitts from our Casa Salama program. So welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. And Elizabeth, would you tell us a little bit about your background, uh, your work uh, in the field of human services and child welfare? Well, sister, um, my background actually is psychology, mm -hmm. um, but I also brought to the table uh, 20 years experience of actually uh, working with uh, medical terminology where uh, I was responsible for making sure uh, diagnosis and orders was carried out in a hospital setting. So as a result, this uh, combination actually works out uh, very well with what I do now. Because a lot of what you're doing is children's mental health as well as providing this nurturing and safe home for the children, huh? Correct, uh, because uh, this is about, you know, comorbidity and uh, as a result, the dual diagnosis uh, incorporates uh, medical situations as well as uh, mental situations. Now Elizabeth, in your own Liz, uh, as I know you like to be called, so viewers we're going to call her Liz. Uh, Liz 
uh, in your own family, uh, you have some experience raising children too, don't you? Yes, I do. I actually have uh, two adult daughters. Uh, actually, they are also involved in social services as well. Uh, they both have uh, master's degrees. Uh, they pursued it uh, as to the highest, and they actually work in um, the different states uh, doing the same job as uh, well. Continuing the legacy. Yes. That's wonderful. Now, Liz, how long have you been at Maryville Academy? Well, I'm uh, actually, July 1st will be uh, my 13th year. Uh, actually, sister, I'd like to also add uh, Maryville Academy also um, over, uh, it was overseeing a facility that I worked for prior to Maryville, where I actually worked three and a half years for a, a place called Commun uh, Commercial Palace. And oh, sure. Maryville actually came in in 1995, and they actually was, uh, the first introduction, and I actually came and uh, received some of the pre-service that you offer for all your staff. So we can count you for 16 and a half years, Liz, yes, right? Yes, you can. And what are you doing now? Well, right now I'm actually the manager, uh, program manager of Casa Salama B program, one of the three programs Dr. Rocco uh, talked about at the Isenberg Bartlett campus. And this program is uh, where I have responsibility of making sure that uh, the 10 uh, young ladies that's in that home is um, carrying out their uh, needs uh, with the staff. Uh, I'm there on a daily basis, uh, making sure that I'm um, interacting, I'm representing, uh, making sure that I'm going to their schools, making sure, first of all, uh, one of the things that we just did this past Friday, we had a prom actually on campus. Oh, uh, let's come back to the prom. Yes. Let, let me first make sure our viewers know, what are the ages of our girls? Well, right now, the ages of 14 to 21 years of age. Okay, and uh, I want to make sure the viewers heard this. You have uh, ten adolescent girls yes. all living in your home. You're raising yes. them all at once. Helping, yes. helping yes. them develop all at once. Yes. And what's a regular schedule like before we get to the prom? Well, a regular schedule is, uh, first of all, is uh, it's the same thing week by week. But a regular schedule, say, if you started on a Monday, uh, they are going to school in the community. They actually go to their community school. Once they come home, the structure is such that they would go bowling in the afternoon. We like to continue their social skills and making sure that they're interacting with their community. And we go through the week making sure that their activities in the community, like uh, going swimming, like going out to the movies, making sure that they are going out once a week actually to dinner and we're teaching them table manners and making sure once again that they're able to interact with their peers as well as people that they meet in the community. So this is the structure. And the girls are also learning golf, aren't they not? Yes, that's another component. They also have weekly yoga. Uh, so we have other components that uh, in the program um, each day uh, is there something. So at one principle of your home is that the girls go to school every day Yes, because we want them to graduate. Exactly, they do graduate. We actually have uh, graduation. We, I just had a graduate, eighth grade graduate um, that we had a party for and um, she's still with us. And now we'll get to the prom. Mm -hmm. So we finished the school year mm -hmm. and our young ladies in the home had a prom last Friday night. Correct. And what would you like to tell the viewers about that prom? Well, this is, uh, we have two uh, part-time workers that are actually school teachers full-time, and they uh, approached me about actually having our own prom. Uh, sometimes uh, the therapeutic settings that some of our girls are involved with don't have proms. Okay. So in order to make the girls feel just as normal as possible, we try to present them with things like proms or dances. And we actually bought dresses. Uh, we got their hair done, nails done, uh, the whole thing. And we actually had a theme. Uh, oh. Nights Under the Stars, and uh, it was a beautiful prom. And we actually invited uh, St. George's campus, which is the boys that Dr. Rocco uh, referred to, and they actually, you know, put on their tux and came and we had a prom on campus. And so they all danced? Yes, they danced. Uh, we had uh, food, and um, it was great. And now, Liz, would you talk just a little bit about the importance of our young ladies having this experience and what they learn from it? Uh, sister, the importance is uh, these are life skills that no matter who you are, you will need them 
eventually. You don't stay 14 years of age all the time. So therefore, when they move on from us, in which uh, I'm not sure if we'll get into the type of arrangements that their settings are, it's called SILAs and individual um, uh, homes uh, that might happen for some of the kids. But either way, they will need those basic skills. So it's so important that they get them. And, and let's just uh, talk about a couple of those basic skills. They need to be able to interact with other people in Correct. a socially appropriate way. Mm -hmm. They need to be able to handle money. Yes. They need to be able to take public transportation. Correct. Uh, a couple other examples maybe, Liz, that I'm not thinking about. Well, often uh, a part of my schedule that I didn't talk about is every Sunday they go to the dollar store and they, uh, first of all, get allowance once a week. And this is earned by token economy where mm -hmm. they earn these points. So they go to the store and they are, have to count this money. They have staff with them, but they still need to be responsible to understand how much money is needed for whatever item they would like, or if they need to save for that item. Uh, so it's very important. And how is all of this part of the continuous learning that you're promoting? Uh, it's part of, it's, it's their way of learning or the way that uh, one of the things that we identify with, each one of the girls have what we call IEP. It's an individual educational plan. So this is the way that they are taught at school. So it's the concept translate to the program. So this is why we make sure that everything is visual for them because this is how they learn. And so that's the reason why we um, have certain things in the program. If you come into the program that I work with, you will look around and you will see uh, certain things on the wall like uh, money or you might see a, a clock or you might see um, Black History Month or you might see, you know, uh, uh, it's how to do a home job because they have to do those things. So they're uh, very uh, visual learners. Yes. And um, they, our, our young children have these challenges of the intellectual disability or the mental illness, but um, clearly from what you say and what Dr. Rocco says uh, and what we've seen, our children can learn. Yes. They can achieve. They can yes, succeed. They, can. Yes. they just have these challenges, and we uh, ameliorate those challenges in part by the kinds of continuous learning that you've just described, right? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. how about rewards? Uh, rewards come in many uh, different forms for the girls. Um, sometimes it's just a note that uh, we might get from a teacher that's telling us how well our girls are doing. Or it might come from a family member that comes by to visit and tell us how well we're doing with the girls. But other rewards are done through a token economy where there is a point system that they are able to cash in at the end of the week. And they also uh, take the opportunity to buy uh, type of things they can use for their coping skills. And, so, I'm sorry, and, then you're, yes. and what you're saying is that in addition to going to the stores when they have allowance, mm -hmm. when they get the, the points, uh, they can trade them in at a gift store that we have right at Casa Salama, right? Correct. It's on campus and they are able to sort of negotiate uh, the different uh, tools that they feel is helpful for them uh, as a coping skill. So okay. they will purchase that. Thank you, Liz. And I want to say that uh, you've heard from uh, Liz Pitts, you've heard from Dr. Rocco Simarusti. Uh, these are two of our wonderful staff who uh, give their wisdom and their knowledge and their time and most of all their hearts to work with our precious young ladies who are in our Casa Salama program. Our young ladies are very important. Our young ladies can learn. Our young ladies can achieve. They deserve to have the opportunity, and that's what we try to do with Casa Salama. Thank you for joining us for Children First. We'll see you next month.